Hello YouTube, I'm Michael Size and I've been trying to find a way to make a meaningful impact on the energy crisis. And the way I'm going to try and do that is by sharing some knowledge. I've accidentally produced a chunk of knowledge that's actually helping you save one cubic meter of natural gas per day. And it does this while actually improving my life quality, not even keeping it flat, but actually improving it. And I'm making this video to share that bit of knowledge with you. When you're taking a shower, you need need about 5 to 10 liters of water per minute. But when you're washing something in your hands, like dishes or whatever, you actually only need about 1.5 liters per minute, provided that you have adequate pressure. However, most faucets still run at something like 4 to 8 liters per minute, even when using hot water, which is pretty insane when you actually stop and think about it. I mean, the water itself is cheap enough, I guess. It's not free, but it's usually pretty cheap. But the energy that goes into heating up that much water is actually pretty substantial. And I want to make sure I clarify this. That jump from 1.5 liters per minute to 4 liters per minute doesn't actually help you wash any better or wash any faster. It literally doesn't do anything except literally pour your money down the drain. It's by solving this problem that I've managed to save one cubic meter of natural gas per day, but solving this problem was actually quite complicated because most solutions turned out to have significant issues. First of all, you can't simply put a restrictive nozzle on a regular faucet because if this solution is going to work at a kitchen sink, you're gonna need to be able to fill up your cooking pots quickly. We need a solution that allows the cold flow to still go up to 8 liters per minute like normal, but which restricts the hot flow to only 2 liters per minute while maintaining adequate pressure. Secondly, a simple restriction of flow might not actually be possible as a retrofit at all. For me, it turned out not to be. I own a natural gas fired combi boiler, which is basically a tankless water heater that's also hooked up to work as a central heating system. These devices are very popular here in Europe because they're inexpensive and they are, again, tankless, meaning that there is no idle waste heat. They produce hot water at the same rate that you're using it, so they produce it only when you use it. But of course there's a catch. See, because you need to be able to heat the water in real time, these boilers need to have a very high maximum power, something like 25 kilowatts for my boiler. But this means that they inevitably also have a very high minimum power. And the result of this is that the boiler will actually refuse to heat the water at all unless the flow at the faucet is a minimum of 3.5 liters per minute. Again, it needs this minimum water flow because it has a high minimum power and it needs somewhere safe to dump all of that power. According to the manual, that minimum power is supposedly 10 kilowatts, but in reality it can only throttle down to about 16 kilowatts, and it simulates the 10 kilowatts via cycling. Unfortunately, it only attempts to do that cycling in some very specific conditions, and even when it tries, it doesn't actually work that well, the temperature of the water fluctuates. So what I'm saying is that in practice, the minimum power is actually 16 kilowatts, which is enormous. Finally, even if the boiler did not have this limitation, like a boiler with a water tank which doesn't have a minimum flow, a simple restrictive nozzle would still encounter additional challenges. A problem is that before you can actually get your hot water, you first need to flush out the cold water that had been sitting in the water pipes. And even after you're done flushing out the cold water, you still need to keep on waiting for a while because your pipes are also cold and until they get up to temperature they're gonna be sucking all the heat out of your water before it gets to you. This waiting happens with any central water heater regardless of whether or not it has a tank and it's a substantial amount of time even with the regular high flow nozzle. I used to wait something like 40 seconds for that cold to flush out and flushing it out through a restrictive nozzle would take unacceptably long. Not to mention that if you're using a water heater with a tank in order to solve the minimum flow problem, you're actually reintroducing the heat loss problem when the whole point of this exercise was going to be efficiency. The waiting time problem could technically also be solved by using a recirculating system, but that's, first of all, it's a nightmare to install, it's tons of hardware and tons of labor, and it also makes the waste heat problem even worse than with a simple tank. Way worse, in fact, and it also adds idle 
handle electricity use. So here is the solution that I found. It's an off the shelf product, which at first looks like the dumbest idea in the universe, but it actually solves all the problems listed above without any real compromises. And this solution is electrically heated water faucets. These things cost $18 at my local hardware store. So it cost me $36 for the kitchen and bathroom sinks. They have an electrical resistance inside, they plug into a 240 volt outlet, they use exactly 3 kilowatts of electrical power when making hot water, and they make hot water in real time, just like a tiny tankless water heater right there in the body of the faucet. The water dial turns one way for cold water and the other way for hot water. Both directions get the same range of motion, but through that range of motion, the cold flow will vary between 0 and 8 liters per minute, while the hot flow will vary between 0 and 2 liters per minute. And because the nozzle is designed correctly, there is no loss of pressure. You still get significant pressure even at 1.5 liters per minute. It's pretty clever actually. The electrical switch itself is actually operated by a diaphragm. So when you turn the dial to hot, the water is routed in such a way that it comes into contact with the diaphragm. The water pressure pushes on the diaphragm and thus closes a switch on the other side of it. No water pressure results in no electrical contact. It isn't the dial that connects the electricity, it's the water pressure itself. The dial does make a clicking noise at the middle point, which at first had me thinking that it contained a switch, but that's not actually a switch, it's literally just a device that makes a clicking noise. The only way to adjust temperature is by adjusting the flow, which I can tell you from experience works a lot better than I expected it to work. You actually develop the muscle memory quite quickly and the exact temperature doesn't really matter that much. The only thing that this faucet cannot do well is it can't fill up a sink with hot water. I mean it can, you're just gonna be waiting forever. This is fine in my opinion, I've never understood that style of washing stuff. I wash everything under running water exclusively, sticking my hand in a full sink of dishwater just feels unsanitary. In the beginning I told you that this device actually improved my life quality. And there are two reasons why I'm saying that. The first and most important reason is that this is true instant hot water. No more waiting for the pipes to warm up, the hot water is made right there on the sink and you can have it in seconds. The second reason is that with this upgrade your sinks will no longer interfere with your showers, which is important in a household that has more than one member. In my opinion, these two benefits are significant enough that I would keep using these faucets even if I had no concern about efficiency at all. In fact, I told you in the beginning of the video that I found this bit of knowledge accidentally and this is actually how it happened. I got these faucets initially to improve my life quality in the two ways that I mentioned. I started measuring the energy consumption out of pure curiosity and then I found out that I'm actually saving tons of money. Speaking of which, which I think that's been enough qualitative analysis, so let's move on to quantitative analysis of the actual amounts of savings you can get with this. As I said, I own two of these faucets, which means I've spent a total of $36 on them. I've measured how much electricity they use per day, and in the summer it's basically zero because mains water is 25 Celsius, so I just use cold water all the time, but in the winter it's about 2.5 kilowatt hours per day, and that translates to about 50 minutes of operation per day. 50 minutes of operation on the combi boiler at the 16 kilowatt minimum power should use about 1.3 cubic meters of gas in theory, but according to the actual gas meter, my actual gas use has gone down by an average of 1.6 cubic meters per day. And this makes sense because the combi boiler is also wasting gas in that time when I'm waiting for the hot water to arrive. But with the electric faucets, it arrives pretty much immediately. So Sourcing 2.5 kilowatt hours of electricity from a natural gas power plant is going to result in about 0.6 cubic meters of natural gas being burnt, hence my headline number of 1 cubic meter of savings per day. 
in terms of primary energy at least. In terms of cost, for the cost you're gonna have to also include the water savings, not just the energy, and your prices are going to be different from mine. But for me, the 125 liters of water savings are worth about 20 cents, the 1.6 cubic meters of gas are worth about one dollar, and the 2.5 kilowatt hours of electricity added costs me about 40 cents. So a net saving of 80 cents per day per winter day that is. Of course in summer it's pretty much zero. In total I would estimate the savings to be about $160 per year, meaning over 400% yield on my $36 investment. Correspondingly, I estimate the primary energy savings at about 200 cubic meters of gas per year. There are 100 million households in the European Union. If 10% of them are in a position to benefit from this device and they eventually make the same investment that I have, that could save in total up to 2 billion cubic meters per year. In terms of climate impact, the 2.5 kilowatt hours of electricity will always produce less CO2 than the 1.6 cubic meters of gas. Even if the electricity is coming from coal power plants, you can see the numbers on screen. It's also very important important to remember that any solution which is electrified is automatically renewables ready. I can run my electric faucet on electricity coming from wind and solar, but my combi boiler is always going to require gas. This turns out to be important in terms of national security also, because I can run my electric faucets on electricity made from coal or fuel oil, but my combi boiler will again always need gas. Optionality is valuable. So are 10 million European households realistically going to see my video? Of course not. But if you do, and if you think you can benefit from this investment, it's $18 and 30 minutes of DIY. And then if you love it like I do, you can go ahead and recommend it further. I've been using this device for about a year now, and I'm still excited about it, at least excited enough to make a YouTube video. But the YouTube video has now stretched long enough, so thank you for watching and the subscribe button is very close to the like button.